will be pretty quick, but I wanted to go through um, a very simple script that was a real world example of something I had to, a friend of mine needed to do, and how I accomplished it with uh, water, water web driver, and um, just simple, some little bit of Ruby. The idea behind it was a friend of mine had a list of parts, and he manages a parts store. So he has these uh, IDs of each part, and he needed to tag the parts with certain metadata. So he um, he went to he uses a third-party website that manages their inventory, and they don't they don't have a system to allow lar like large data sets. It's really all they allow is one part at a time. You fill out a form put the part number in there, you tag it with an ID, you tag it with whatever you need, and with metadata tags or whatever, and then you submit the form, one part at a time. And in this case, he needed to tag over 4,000 parts with the same information. So the, considering the speed of the site and how much time this would take, it would take a human being probably eight hours you see, it was, a, it was a lengthy thing, maybe longer than that even. So he asked me if I could just write some web automation. Uh, before he came to me, he did see if they had an API, and they did not have an API. He also asked the third-party application, uh, the people who um, maintain it, if they could do this themselves, if he could hand them the file, and they said no, that they wouldn't do it. He had to do each part number one by one through the website. So that made it pretty limiting. So he came to me and asked me if I could come up with a solution. My solution was to look at this and try to find um, an easy way of just simply browsing to his site, logging in as him, so what's omitted here is his act is actually the login process, but I basically defined uh, a browser class variable as uh, Firefox. Um, so you know it would have been like app browser um, equals water colon colon browser dot new um, you know colon Firefox. Then I took that and I basically said, okay, let's go to the site, which uh, would be um, the part store. Uh, this actually is a special page within the part store. So what's omitted here is the login page. And I just basically, uh, I log in, then I wait until the main body loads. And basically, um, I create a file name. I'm going to create a file called, uh, I'm loading, I'm sorry, I'm loading a file. And he gave me this file called Next 200. He was giving me, uh, he just wanted to start with 200 parts at a time. So here's 200. I just wanted to make sure this would work. So we started with 200. So he gives me a file called Next200.csv. And I use some basic Ruby and I just say, okay, let's use the CSV um, library and we'll say for each which basically is going to say for each row let's load that file name and for that row I'm going to take uh, and make a variable called num and that num is going to be the row of field 0 so field 0 would be the first field in the row you know if you had like multiple fields here um, you know, like machine, car, all that. These would each be different fields. That'd be 0, 1, 2, so forth. Since we have a one field CSV file, we're just going to leave it as CSV uh, with field 0. And then we say, you know, continue mitigating the website, you know, find a text field, name this, and then insert into that field the part number. Okay, that's where you would input the part number. Hit enter, okay. Then you come down and you mitigate more of the fee of the form. You t you select some check boxes and whatever that he needs done, and then uh, you basically submit it. 
basically the submission, um, what how the his form field worked was you had to insert the part number and then hit enter to search for it in the database. And then when it comes up, he had some special stuff he had to select, which is done here. And then a button, a submit button. Very simple uh, browser automation. And then we came down to uh, this other thing I did here within the loop. And you'll notice this is a, a loop here. Uh, you can see it goes from here to here. And within it, I say, if on the screen it says, um, you know, certain text, then I would put out part number has been tagged or part number has not been tagged. And that's pretty much it. And that basically was able to get him, um, and then we just let the script run ultimately with all the parts in a CSV file. And it took several hours, but, you know, it could just be run in a VM somewhere. And it didn't have to take somebody's time or computer time. Um, it was just running in the background on a virtual machine somewhere on the network. But that's basically um, an example, real world example of using a CSV import to pull data in, to feed into a web page, to actually move, to actually do a function that is a real world need. Thank you.